did everything. All right, guys, we are back in Solo Learn, finishing up our jQuery section. We have, I guess not finishing up, we have two sections left. We're in events. So uh, in the past, if you're trying to do events, you'd be doing a whole mess of things. Uh, part of the great thing about jQuery is it's the simplification of what would seem at first glance probably easier task. So if we wanted in vanilla uh, JavaScript, we'd have to first get the element by ID like so, then do on click, then write a function. However, now we can do it with just the dot click function and then whatever we want to do within there. It does the same exact thing, except it's about half the amount of code. Um, an event handler is, so the event handler is the click right here, or the function that's handled when we click it. So some common events would be like key down, when you press a key, when you click, when you hover, all these sorts of things that occur when you are um, trying to handle events. So fill in the blanks to handle a click event. So a click event is probably going to be the most common uh, on the paragraph tag. So when you click, we want to run a function that alerts that it has been clicked. And then we want to go ahead and close the function like so. So use the paragraph, uh, use the selector tag for paragraphs to click to run a function, whatever you want to do when that happens, and continue on. Now, there's also another way of doing this. So before we're just doing click, you can also do uh, on, dot on and then pass in a string parameter for what that event is going to be. So basically on and then what would it be click or on, hover, whatever the event is, you can do this as well, which is another way of handling events. So you're gonna use your selector. In this example, we're selecting the form element and we're saying on and what do we wanna do? on submit so on submit on the submit event we want to run a function that has some code in it that's all we're doing here with our, our jQuery class with our with our jQuery event handler now off the argument off method is the event name you want to remove the handler for so you can also remove the click handler for it so maybe on click you do this and then you're saying look remove the click handler so when we're working with jQuery, we have to pass in the CSS identifier tag for IDs, which is the hashtag. And then we're saying off, and we want to remove the handler, fill the looks from the handler for the focus event, like so. Now the event object. Now this is one I'm not too, too familiar with what they mean by the event object. So let's slow down for a second and read this. Every event handling function can receive an event object, which contains properties and methods related to the event, page X, page Y, at the time of the event occurred. Okay, so you can, the type of the event is like click, which if you want to specify the button, then you have the data, the target, prevent default, stop propagation. It looks like you can go into a lot more detail with the event. So the event object is passed to the event handler function as an argument, I see. So alert event dot page X. Okay, I, I see it. So if you want to pass in the event and all the parameters related to the event, you can do that like so. So in this case, we want to fill in the blanks to handle the key down event. So we have key down and we're passing in the event uh, attribute to do some stuff with it. This is basically data at the end of the day or kind of data that we want to handle in one way or the other. So key down event on the input field and alert which key was pressed. So we're going to say event dot, uh, you know, I don't remember what the value for uh, the key down was, or the input field was. So target data, which, which, there we go. So which is to find out what the key is. So we're going to fill the key down, key down. And then for the event, we want to find out what key was pressed. If we do this, an alert a box will show up, showcasing that we press enter or enter or escape or whatever. Now we can also trigger events programmatically using the trigger method. So what this basically does is we can set in our code that's saying, look, trigger the click event. Now whatever we have set up for click when that div is clicked will then run, and we don't have to worry worry about it being clicked 
unless for this instance. So if we want to trigger the submit event on form, we can do that as well. So creating a to-do list. This is probably the most basic jQuery project you'll see. Um, you have an H1 tag, say my to-do list. So the gist of what's going on here is we want to, when we click the button, add the value to our OL list here. So we want to fill in the blank. So we have some, close our H1 tags, uh, close our LI tags, and finally close our ordered list tags okay so we're getting started there now what else we need to do is saying look we want to add on click is what this is saying here and then this is our event handler take it up one level inside the event handler we then select the value of the input field to create a new li element so we're now creating an element like so notice how we're not selecting an element we're actually creating it just by passing in an opening and closing tag we're going to set the text equal to the value and it's going on and on and on. Uh, the gist of it is that we're creating an LI that we are then going to append to wherever the my list ID is. And we can go ahead and clear the input as well. Let's go ahead and actually open this one up because I think uh, it'll be easier to explain as we work through it. So let's run this real quick. So you see we have our H1 and then we have a new item. Let's open up the JavaScript real quick. So in our new item, let's say... Um, create a channel I don't know um, what's gonna happen here is it's gonna check this if statement checks to see if this box is empty if it's not empty we're then going to create a li element and we're gonna add that value Remember, and we're getting the value from the input dot val which is gonna get the text value now if we want to append that we want to add it we're going to go ahead and add this button which it and then we're going to append the element to my list and then we're going to go ahead and clear this so you see that bam and what's getting created here is this x to clear it out as well that's the gist of what's happening a simple to-do list now let's go ahead and fill in the blanks to create a new element and add it to the element with the id test so we're creating a brand new div here and to create an elements again you have to have an opening and closing tag and we're going to go ahead and target the test tag and we want to append the this div right here so we're saying look append the new div to this id pretty pretty straightforward when it comes to um remembering uh to do this cool uh, all that is left to do is to remove the corresponding element. So we talked about that a second ago. So what what keyword represents the current object? I believe that, oh, so if you're dealing with an object and you don't necessarily know the name, but you know that you're gonna be dealing with that object, you can use the, this keyword to target it directly, like so. So module five quiz. So fill in the blanks that I invent handler to the paragraph. So remember we can also use the on and define what event it is in this example it's click and we want to run a function that does some stuff when a paragraph is clicked and what will the output of the div be if click two times so we have a div that has one here then our script tag basically just saying run this code and we're saying when this div is clicked uh get the text of the div and then from that text or the text of the div is going to be equal to the text plus one so if we click it twice it's then going to iterate twice which means we're going to go ahead and output three what dot text plus one what am i misunderstanding here oh excuse me because this is text and not so this is a string guys right so i'm treating it as if it's an integer so this, what's happening is when you get the text, it's just actually pulling the text value, which is why we're gonna have one, one, one. There we go. Now fill in the blanks to remove the click event handler from all AI elements. So again, with with the um, the on click, first you or with jQuery, you're gonna first use the selector. In this case, it is going to be the A elements. We're gonna select all of them, and then we're gonna pass in on, and then we're gonna define 
what the event is via string. So when you select, this is selecting the A object saying, pay attention to this, saying on what event, and then this is the event. Oh, excuse me, remove the element. So uh, the exact same except we're doing off instead of on, my mistake. And then finally, uh, how many A characters will output after the div is clicked three times? So we have a div, and we want to, when this div is clicked, we want to append an A, and then div is off.click. Hmm. So we're going to turn this off. I believe, and I'm not quite sure how the scope works here. Is it off when it's nested in this function? Because if so, we're going to have four divs. Yeah. Let's get a hint. I, I don't want to jump around. I want to see. So two. Okay. So once you do click, even though it's I was thinking it might be nested in this function, that's not the case. So once you turn that click function off, it's not going to turn back on even uh, until you actually do it yourself. So keep that in mind. So we have the first one, then we click it once, it appends the anchor tag, and then we turn it off. And so it doesn't matter how many times we click it after that, it's no longer going to going to uh, append the A's like so. Cool, so that was the event stack. Um, we're up to our last one effects, which is something that in jQuery, I will admit that I've kind of skipped over. I usually use some pre-built libraries and things like that. That's uh that's my shortcomings as a developer, but I'm I'm glad to be doing this jQuery course. Lots of cool stuff in here. As always, guys, thank you for watching. Look forward to our weekly interview with developers and behind the code every Friday. And if you want to support me, you can go to patreoncom slash tutorials 360 And don't forget to check out our Facebook group, Code Tech and Caffeine. In the description is the link is in the description below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. If you're interested in coding bootcamp, check out devmountain.com where housing is included in your price of tuition. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and support me on Patreon. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.